So, hey, friends. Um, what I've got here is a Caracorder Lite, the QWERTY keyboard that is also cording enabled. And I um, just want to point out a few things on it. So, um, first, let's, let's listen to how it sounds. Let's put the mic down here. And then let's do a sound. Let's do a sound where it's got some cording and some some typing. Um, okay, so that's the the sound that it makes. Now. Um, what you've got here instead of a regular spacebar is a split spacebar, and each one of these has a different modifier it can add to a chord, as well as the dupe key, which has the alt um, key cap on top. Um, some other keys, this, these function and alt keys can also act as modifier keys. Um, and then I want to point out that the the Windows key is on the corner and control is here, which may be the opposite of what you're used to if you're used to a Windows keyboard that has control on the corner. Um, I've, so I've been using this on the, on a Mac a lot, and so it hasn't really bothered me, um, but um, it might bother you. The other thing is here, here on the uh, right side, the shift key is small to make room for the arrow keys and delete key. I personally would have rather had a larger shift key and then um, maybe the arrow keys uh, a smaller size. Or I've, I've seen some other 65% or 60% keyboard layouts that, that have a more full-size shift key here. Um, so if I was making a light version 2, I'd probably have a larger shift key. But eventually you do get used to kind of having this. Um, I'll probably personally for mine replace this key with a different feeling key, um, maybe even one that is higher, has a higher profile, just so that it's easier for me to find in sort of in the dark while I'm typing. Because I, I do often mess up. And then what happens is when you, if you miss on this side, you go up a line, which really puts you in the wrong place. Um, so, so the, yeah, so that's the overview of it. Let's take a look at um, kind of how typing feels. And here I can enlarge this a little bit. So let's see. Um, typing so the keys on the Caracorder light are very light if you're used to normal keyboards they're only 35 grams of actuation force as a comparison my Logitech keyboard um, which is what I was using prior to this is 65 grams so it's um, almost twice as much force to press down a key over there as it is here um, it's such that if I lay my fingers just down on the keys, they can still rest. So here I'm, I'm just kind of laying my fingers down, and, and they're not triggering anything. But while you're typing, um, it, is, it is fairly easy to accidentally bump a key. Looks like I, I haven't actually bumped anything because um, I've gotten used to it. But when, when you first get it, you'll find that when you go, when you go for stuff, you're, you're, like I bumped bracket, like you're, you're just kind of, you're nudging things, you're hitting things, and you may go, oh, I don't know if I can type on this. After a few hours, you'll be like, I don't know if I can type on um, normal switches ever again. I love these light switches. I think they feel really good. They sound good. You you want to you want to type more. And in fact, I noticed that when I did some comparative tests on monkey type, for example. So this is me who normally scores around a 90 something words per minute on my Logitech. Um, just typing normally on this keyboard already, um, the nice mechanical keyboard is giving me a speed improvement. Um, so that was the first thing that I that I noticed and enjoyed about it. Now, um, when we when we then move into cording, potentially there's the potential for a greater speed improvement. So I've been practicing some chords. Um, based on some of the longer words in monkey type and 
in particular words that are longer than five or six characters. So right now I'm not fast enough, for example, for but, which I can type at 133 words per minute, according to this, um, for it to be worth quoting. Um, but it, it is, it can be worth quoting for, for something like however, um, which I can, I can hit the chord for relatively quickly. Um, also want to point out that when er, when you do a chord, it's very easy to get your fingers tangled. And so I've been playing a lot with the the position of these chords, and I try to avoid doing chords where I'm doing crazy crossovers and things. Even though having played piano, I know that I can do things like this. Um, it, what that does, though, is it makes resetting back to the default position problematic and that you can end up one one key over or just not quite in the right place. And then if you provoke an error because of the previous chord, you lose even more speed. So let's see what happens. What have I done? So ask just between. So I, I have that chord. Now I, I slowed down for that just so you could kind of see it. Okay, so there was a, a good run for me with some chords in there. Um, you can see I did the chord for leave. I did LV around A-R-O, um, however, H-O-W-E, little L-I-T-E. Um, and I also had some typos and things in my, you can see my words per minute was 102. So what's interesting here is that this is about the same speed as I as I did on my straight typing. So um there's a potential when you're doing these chords for no real speed improvement if you're not really doing them without hesitation, without having um, practiced them, and without almost doing them in the same speed as a as a regular keystroke. So let's see if I can hit some of these chords a little bit faster. In, um, and I'm going to switch down to words 10 um, just so I can do a few more revs of these. All right, so that was my first attempt here, and I did state um, while and uh, did I did more. So I added three chords in here. This is at 139. I'm going to try and repeat this test and just type it all out. Okay, so it looks like I can type it out just as fast. So we're, if we're going to be faster than that, we're going to need to do even better. All right, so in in this one, um, in my uh, in my chording version, I was able to do a lot faster than than in my straight typing version, and I think that that was because the chord for another, for example, really saves you a lot of time. I'm going to try and repeat the chording test here. So first, I can start it off with the chord again. So this is a little bit cheating on these ten word tests, where you can put your fingers in the chord for the first one. And, and and you can also look ahead and see what other chords you're going to have to do. And you can go like, oh, do I remember that chord? Do I remember that chord? I'm going to repeat that. Okay, I made a typo there. Let's see if I can do it again without a typo. Okay, so there's the there's a version. I actually didn't do it. Um, a chord for one of the words here that I did previously, but uh, I did it for again at 5,000 words a minute and for another at 5,000 words a minute. And here we have we have beat the 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 straight typing score, although no, I'm not typing at 250 words a minute here. Um, I've just quartered a few. 
Um, so this, these are the results that I'm getting after a few days on the light, incorporating a few different chords, mostly for the longer words in. Um, now, of course, I can try and chord everything. Um, if I can remember. I don't have chords for a lot of two-letter words. Um, what is that? I don't think I have govern as a chord. So you can just see this is me, um, a fairly experienced quarter uh, after trying to chord my way through a whole sentence, and it's way slower than um, just typing it out because uh, because there's there's a lot to think about when you're when you're doing chord chording. That doesn't mean that I won't eventually be able to do this. I'm just sort of saying. This is kind of what happens when you when you're first starting out is like um it's not it's not as fast as you might think trying to get these chords in versus uh typing them one letter at a time. Um last thing I want you guys to know about is a just a, a couple of quirks. So one of them is that the the um there's a chord for backspacing a certain number of keys by pressing a number and the backspace key. And that goes up to 11 and 12 with the dash key and the equals key. On the light, if you accidentally fat finger that equals key and back, you delete a lot. Um, so you have to be really careful to only hit that backspace key or boom, um, everything is gone. Um, so, so that's kind of one thing to consider. And then the other is just uh, if you're considering this or, or when you get it, um, you may find that you're used to having your thumb in a certain position on the space bar and now that that place is gone and you end up having to kind of reteach yourself but i didn't find it that hard just to kind of twist my thumb in and get used to now i'm spacing here instead of um here which is kind of where i had i was used to actually sort of this is this was my comfortable spacing space bar space um and now i just kind of moved it over a half inch that was not hard at all so Overall, um, I, I like the switches that they chose. I think that the the layout, um, as I said before, I would I would have changed maybe a couple of things about it. Um, and I think when they release the ability to remap keys, if I were a Windows user, I would have Control here and the Windows key here. Um, and I might even make both of these arrow the arrow key and the shift key over here both shift if I if I can't reliably hit that a hundred percent of the time or become a a left shift person. I'm a right-handed shift person, um, but overall, it does exactly kind of what what they what they said it should do. Um, there have been a few bugs with the firmware, but they've been they've been uh, fixing those quite quickly in the in the beta. And I think that um, as it goes live and goes further out from the Kickstarter and into full production, um, we sh if 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 the quality of the firmware is as much as we have seen with the Caracorder One. Um, I would expect the device to work um, relatively bug-free, and um, uh, yeah, so um, that's that's pretty much what it is. If I was going to give any advice to the Caracorder team on making this product successful, I would the one thing I would say is package it in package the box in another box. Um, a lot of mail carriers today seem to be just chucking packages onto people's porches, really doing crazy stuff. Um, and it looked to me like while it was packed securely in its own box, um, it may be vulnerable to damage from external sources and could be could be worth packaging um, a little bit more uh, tightly, given how expensive it is and how much work goes into making one of these. So those are my initial thoughts.